they couldn't believe that that we were alive. There's no way that two ejection seats can happen in that amount of time, within a second and a half or two seconds. So, so this is back in 1981 aboard the uh, USS Con uh, Constellation. And I'm a skipper of the uh, BF-24 F-14 uh, fighter squadron. And we're in the uh, Indian Ocean. So about two months into the cruise, uh, get airborne in the afternoon, I lead a flight of uh, three, and uh, we come back uh, to land about four or five o'clock in the afternoon. So the, the uh, aircraft carrier rolls out, I'm in the groove, call the ball, the ball's on, everything's looking good. I touch down, I get a, a hook skip three to a four, and I'm thinking that's okay, and then everything went into slow motion. So we're going down, I can see the airplane is trying to stop, but I said, this airplane is not going to stop. So you keep the power up as normal. And all of a sudden, I got to about 80 feet from going over the angle deck. And my head was right up against the rifle scope. That's how abrupt it was, like hit, hitting a brick wall. And then all of a sudden, they heard a loud uh, pop in the back. And I, uh, I told the bio, that was a call sound of my uh, radar intercept officer. I said, bio, eject, eject. And he knew right away that something wasn't right as well. So he initiates ejection. I'm still trying to fly the airplane, even though we're about ready to settle off the angle at about 80 knots. I hear the, the canopy fire, and I said, that's good. And then I heard uh, bio seat fire. Then the airplane hits the water sideways, and I said, hell, my seat's not going to fire. And there, then all of a sudden, next, next thing you know, the Martin Baker seat comes out of the airplane, and it was either a rock skipping on top of the water or it was underwater. Nobody ever saw it. That's how, that's how low we were. So I'm underwater, sinking, and one good thing about the Navy mask, you know, we can still breathe underwater down to 100 feet. So I'm underwater and I got seat man separation, but then I, I, uh, I, I'm able to come up. And this is the first cruise ever that the U.S. Navy had the flu eights, and they were the saltwater activated uh, CO2 cartridges that if you're in the saltwater, they inflate your life preserver and, and it brings you up to the surface. That one thing that saved my life. So I come up to the top, look around, and it's amazing when I'm looking up at the carrier, how close it was and how big, uh, how tall it was. And then the helicopter was right on top of me and I gave him a thumbs up. And I said, go to bio, because he was closer to the ship than I was, and he got a partial shoot, or maybe he, he got one shoot just before it hit the water. I said, go to him. Interesting, it was on that particular catapult shot that bio says, hey, Skipper, look at all those sea snakes off to the left-hand side. And this is in December of 1981, so it must have been mating season for all these sea snakes. And when I looked over there, I'm not a snake person, even though I come from West Virginia, I hate snakes. I looked over there and all these brownish green, uh, must have been thousands of them, are intertwined in her mating season. So then I look around me and I'll be damned if there's not, it looks like a sea snake right behind me. So then I do a, a paddle to turn myself around to figure out, am I right in the midst of these suckers or what? Well, then I... Then I looked at it again, and we actually had 12 to 15 foot swells. And I think that was another thing that saved my life. I must have hit the swell just right, you know, so it didn't break my neck or back. And then I, on the swell, then I looked up there, and it wasn't a sea snake, it was my olive green seat cushion from the ejection seat. And I've got to hand it to Captain Brooks, who was the skipper of the uh, ship at that time. Uh, and he knew exactly what to do. He turned that ship just right so they wouldn't run over us. That's how close we were. To the, to the side of the carrier. Got aboard the Hilo, they came down, we landed, and there was uh, my XO to greet me and everybody was applauding. So what happened was, uh, up in the tower, they had the four dials uh, set for each cable. Dial number four had been broken and they got in the habit pattern of listening to somebody else telling them that it was set. And when in fact it wasn't set, it was set not for 52,000, except for like uh, bare minimum, like maybe uh, whatever the cod comes in. So with the 52,000 er 52, pound aircraft coming in, we just jerked the cable right out of the, out of the arresting gear mechanism and took it over the side. 
So it turned out to be human error on that deal. So we, uh, we survived that. The only thing I got out of it, uh, I lost three quarters of an inch of height due to the compression of my back and chipped my neck. And, uh, and then I couldn't, and, I, and I'm a jogger, still today an avid jogger. So about, I was grounded for three or four days uh, just to, to, to be monitored. And, uh, and then I just couldn't run on the flight deck because the back was just pretty much gone, you know, for that time frame. And then they needed some time to heal.